They are rote repetition machines that enforce you to see the same things over and over and over again and addict you to the device. And any good thing that you have in there is tethered to the addiction machines. And when it comes to scripture memorization, it is leading you away from the goal. My name's Josh, this is Bible Memory Goal, and you just heard from Anthony, who runs Magnetic Memory Method, a YouTube channel, a website, having to do with improving your memory. Now, in the conversation you're about to hear, we do talk a lot about the Memory Palace Method. However, I really encourage you, even if you're not a Memory Palace person, to listen through for a couple different reasons. First of all, we talk about the use of digital devices in our Bible memory, which he's got some interesting and thought-provoking ideas there. And second, because towards the end, you're gonna hear him try to explain why he encourages people to get into the memory palace, even if you don't think that that's a method that works for you. So let's go ahead and just dive in and learn a little bit more about Anthony. So how did I get into memory? Yep. Well, really the sad part about it, but it, the good thing about it is I was in a deep depression mm -hmm. while doing my research for the early stages of my PhD. And, you know, it was actual depression. I was, I had been hospitalized at one point and hmm. needed medication. And I was what you would maybe call like a zealous science person. So when they say, take pills, I say how many, you know, <laughs> that sort of okay. thing. Uh, and I would do the research myself. And even with a manic depression in the mix, you know, I would be talking with the doctors as much as they would let me talk, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but then the depression would hit and then I wouldn't talk to anybody at all for days and days mm -hmm. on end. So anyway, somehow I dragged myself up to campus one day and I saw some street magicians in the middle of this winter because at York Lanes, which is part of York University in Toronto, they reproduce an outdoor location indoors. <laughs> and this was around the time that YouTube was just coming into the world. Yeah. And David Blaine was all the rage. And these <laughs> people come up to me and they do a magic trick. And it reminded me of when I was a kid and I was into magic. And that's where I found memory techniques. The long story short is I tried to evade reality and was putting aside all my problems. But I found that I could focus not on my biblical Hebrew that I had to study, not on French philosophy, none of that stuff. But card magic, for sure. And in card magic is the holy grail of magic tricks, which is any card at any number. You don't necessarily need a memorized deck, but it sure helps. And so I memorized the deck and I instantly saw that anything that is on a card can be memorized that way. So I just started extracting all of this stuff onto index cards, memorized it that way. And I just noticed a boost in mood. It wasn't cured or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, and years later, I saw the Tim Dalglish research that shows that Use, specifically using method of loci helps people with PTSD symptoms, with depression, and so really? forth. And I think that's exactly what saved my life in that situation, and I never stopped using them ever since. Yeah. So. I mean, I think that you've got the magnetic memory method, which relies almost, is it almost exclusively on the, the method of loci, the, the memory palace? Is that correct? Well, yes and no. Okay. The way that I see the techniques and experience them, which is not my invention to experience yeah. them this way, but I see it in the ancient texts, is that all information is spatial. So, you know, the Greek is megaston topos hapentagarakori, which is from Thales, which means space is ultimate because it contains all things. And if you look in Aristotle's De Memoria, he's taking that to the level of the alphabet, and he literally talks about entering the alphabet in the middle, which I interpret as a memory palace or method of loci encoded mm -hmm. set of spaces where you have A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And he's doing basically what I interpret as Herman Ebbinghausian <laughs> uh, serial positioning effect. Okay. And so it's just awesome, basically. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I focus on the method of loci, but it's just, it seems to me way beyond terms, way beyond yeah. our words for things. It's about space itself. Every letter of the alphabet, and if you look in Giordano Bruno, he'll say, first station of your memory palace, A. Inside of that is another A, and then there's a whole alphabet inside of that alphabet, and then in there is another, and on and on and on oh, wow. to infinity. Now, does anybody actually have infinity <laughs> to go through an infinite series of alphabets? No, but his point is, is that nobody runs out of space. You're never yeah. going to run out of memory palaces because the letter A itself can contain another set of memory palaces. 
Yeah. Which that, themselves so will have spatial properties. Yeah. Do you think that like of all, all the things that, you know, people that approach your methods and, and even just approach you that are trying to memorize things, right? Whether it's just where I left my keys, the names of people, or obviously as we're talking here, text like scripture. Um, mm-hmm. is, is there, does, does the memory palace or do, do certain memory techniques like work better for different types of things that you're wanting to memorize? Or does it all just kind of apply? It's just how you apply that memory technique. Yeah, that's a great question. So, I mean, you can use mnemonics to remember where your keys are. Very Mm -hmm. easy. You have like a giant kangaroo landing like a bomb on your keys and you use a kangaroo because it starts with K, like all that sort of stuff. But there's another technique that's even better, which is put your keys in the same place every time, (laughs) right? Now, a lot of people will, will, will just ignore that, but that's what I do. Yeah. I'd rather spend my time with memory techniques, memorizing long form texts, etc., or just facts, than to take that time and energy away, you know, to be able to live a chaotic life and have my keys all over the place. No, the keys are in the same place every time. And I think of that as itself a memory technique. Yeah. Interesting. Now, I've seen you because you're, you're actually memorizing uh, scripture in, in the original language. Is that correct? Yeah, and I, that's how I started with Biblical Hebrew. Okay. Uh, and me, what's, your, what's your motivation behind that? And, and share a little. I'd be, I'm so curious about how that works for you. Well, a couple of things. One thing is, is that there are multiple translations. Okay. Now, a cool thing that I've experienced a lot, especially with my Sanskrit project, which is quite intense, is that I can basically cross-compare different translations and against the original, right? Now, that's a bit of tricky because even originals sometimes are copied and there are variations in the text. So what exactly original means I, is, is up to contest. But nonetheless, the point is, is if you're going to do textual analysis, not to be a hard nose about it, but you're not really doing textual analysis unless you're taking the quote unquote original sources into context. And if you can know them, you know them in your memory and you can do basically etymology and, you know, in, interpretive work within a language itself. Well, then, you know, you're, you're, you're going for the, for the quote unquote cliche next level. And it, it just strikes me as much more interesting and rewarding than getting into arguments about, you know, so-and-so's translation. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. But, you know, what does the original text say? And have you ever dwelt upon it? like deeply yeah. and, and thought about those, the nature of language, which is like the nature of space, uh, you know, in many, many ways. So then when you're, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that when you're speaking the original language, are you, is it Greek or Hebrew? Which one are you memorizing? I've worked on Hebrew, very little Greek, okay. but, and just recently started with Latin with uh, okay. Book of John, uh, which I was drawn to because of the references to light. Interesting. Okay, so in those cases, I, I could be wrong. I'm assuming that those aren't languages that you would consistently use. Uh, so, you know, when you're creating memories of those words, are, are you essentially helping yourself by creating by creating images that, that remind you of the sounds themselves? Because as opposed to like what, what I might do in English, I would connect it maybe with the, sometimes with the meaning or sometimes with uh, the actual image. But in this case, it's, it's not a, probably a language that you're using all the time. So is it mostly just the sounds? Well, I try to be as sound-based as possible. Okay. But it's ultimately whatever gets the job done. Right? Yeah. So it, it is interesting what you mentioned about, you know, the use of the language. So nobody's well, I shouldn't say nobody's speaking biblical Hebrew. It's not, uh, modern Hebrew is not that different. Um, yeah. But I don't have anybody to speak Sanskrit with. I don't have anybody to speak Latin with, etc. Sure. But that said, you can do things that emulate conversation with a language. So there's lots of books like, you know, how, what we really took from the Romans when it comes to, to Latin, which will patch you into Greek a- almost automatically. Um, and that gets you into dialogue with, with the larger language as such, which will give you ideas. And it comes back to like etymological ideas um, that, that can be quite useful. And then you mentioned, you, you, you framed it with create images. I try never to create images. Okay. Uh, first of all, I haven't created anything. I, I was created. And uh, <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> um, you know, if I'm going to you, you go to the, just start with the letter A, 
I'm not going to try to create an image. Why would I? I've seen a statue of Aristotle. I remember Adam West from Batman when I was a kid. You know, it, 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 Adam Sandler, for that matter. Adam from the old Bible, like I can think of the old Bible stuff from church. Like I have a picture of Adam in the garden with Eve from a painting. Yeah. Nobody's creating anything. And, and that's the number one thing that a lot of people come to me. How do I create any image so fast? And I think, I know I've done it. Yeah, create an image or whatever. But I've tried yeah. over the years to just erase that from my speaking because mm -hmm. I never created anything ever. And that's, yeah. that's part of the speed and the dexterity is actually training your mind to have images come to you because you've spent a little bit of time getting your hands involved in the curation of images, the gathering. Uh, you know, you've probably heard of the bestiary technique and so forth. Yeah. Nobody created any of those animals <laughs> that uses yeah. memory techniques, you know. Uh, okay. So it's the gathering and then the practice of association. Very cool. I, I, you know, I was reading through, you've got a, a, an entire article on your website, uh, How to Memorize Scripture. And I was reading through some of that, and, and I wanted to ask you a couple questions that I thought were really interesting based on what you wrote in there. First of all, um, you, you had some interesting thoughts on using flashcards, uh, mm -hmm. or more than likely, or better said, not using flashcards. Uh, would you mind kind of expounding on, because I know that there are a lot of people uh, that you know, like it's, it's, they use flashcards perhaps because that's the only thing that they know how to do. Right. right, right. Uh, so, so what are, what do you say to that person and, and how do you use any type of flashcard? Well, in, in that particular article, one of my goals was to contextualize what is a digital flashcard, mm -hmm. not necessarily to, to outlaw the use of any tool, sure. but there is also, I mean, just to be a teacher, you have to put your foot down and have a position on things. And, and a yeah. hard line position that I have is something I actually practice. So it is the limitation of digital repetition of any form. So mm. I have spent some experiments with Anki and have optimized it and played around with things. But if you're going to do the art of memory, if you're going to do mnemonics, this is non-digital. It is not rote. Mm. And that doesn't mean you don't use other tools. But if you're going to use those other tools, then you use them in a mnemonic way that avoids rote learning. So what is rote learning? Rote is hoping, wishing, praying, fantasizing that endless repetition is ever going to be fun. Because <laughs> it's not, right? <laughs> it's, I, I'm not saying it doesn't work. It obviously works. I mean, yeah. we have research that shows that rote repetition directly leads to the reduction in critical thinking. So we know there are countries that really mm -hmm. enforce rote repetition. We even have now modern countries, so-called countries based on freedom, that are having arguments over whether they're going to allow certain devices on their platforms. And I would say to them, if you're going to get rid of them, don't get rid of them because you're worried about patches in the back end and getting all your data. Worry about them because they are rote repetition machines that enforce you to see the same things over and over and over again and addict you to the device. And on top of addicting you to the advice, any good thing that you have in there is tethered to the addiction machines that are spiking your dopamine. And when it comes to scripture memorization, it is leading you away from the goal because you're going to want these dopamine spikes more and more and more. But proper, if I can use that term so directly, That's okay. yeah. scripture, meditation, and memorization and meditation upon what you've memorized gives you tonic dopamine. And tonic dopamine is when you are away from the devices the interruption machines and you are mm -hmm. sitting there. I mean, people ask me all the time, what's AI going to do? Chat GPT, all this sort of stuff. I said, man, I go in the park and I sit with a book and I memorize it. Wrong guy to ask. Thank you. <laughs> but like, this is, this is what I think of as the real deal. And so if you want to take the risk, I'm not saying it wouldn't necessarily work, but it's the least likely path to getting what you want. And it's not for me to say, hey, this is what you want. But what most people tell, ask me what they want. I want to memorize scripture. I want to be able to recite long form. I want to meditate on it. Then get a book. If you're going to use flashcards, produce them by your own hand. Lynn Kelly says that it's the ultimate cryptographic method, encryption yeah. method. That's the term that she used in a recent Latrobe University article, right? Yeah. So you want the ultimate encryption method. It is actually writing from memory with your hand, right? Mm. So make your own cards. I make my own cards. I mean, I have stuff that I do with logic and non-classical logic, this yeah. is to help me uh, remember a certain symbol, which is this in one non-classical logic called dialetheism. This is um, the symbol for totality. So I use a totem pole. 
the fact that I did it by hand, I looked at this two, three times and I remembered that that was totality and then I can read this non-classical logic and it's just like, great. I'm not going to sit there rote learning. That's, that is repetition. It yeah. risks rote, but it's creative repetition, gets the hands involved, haptic memory. And so anyway, I know that a lot of people want convenience and, and they yeah. love the digital addiction. I love digital addiction too, but it is the opposite direction of the goal that we seek, especially when there are these getting closer to the maker kind of goals or well, however you frame that in, in yeah. your mind. That's, well, I mean, somebody could say, yeah, well, maybe the maker created digital too and who knows, but he seems a lot like uh, that version, that story seems a lot like exactly the kind of outcomes we don't want and we didn't want in the 20th century, but it's like the world is is doing all it can to reduce critical thinking so that we get there in a hurry even worse. So. One of the things that uh, you showed there with your card that I thought was was really fascinating when you were talking about flashcards and some of the stuff I've seen is is you actually talk about not having all of the information on the flashcard. Is that correct? Like you're you're yeah. you're still forcing your brain to have to come up with something. Yeah, exactly. So uh, one common thing, the odd time I will cheat, but one common thing is that there is no answer, never. Uh, except for the odd thing. Or I'll make an example uh, for somebody or whatever and I'll end up writing on it and it looks like there's an example. But the odd time I will give myself a couple of more clues mm -hmm. because sometimes there are really difficult things that I'm not going to punish myself. I'm not going to be like, well, this is black level and you're, 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 or black belt, sorry, and you're not, you know, or black diamond or whatever. Don't be the blue diamond guy today. I'm just like, come on. I'll give myself a little bit extra. But then it's, it's like that app that you mentioned where you fill in the blanks. But there's no reason why you can't make that for yourself and get the extra benefits of having your hands involved, uh, knowing what we know about the science of hands helping with memory. But yeah, mm. so the, the actual scientific term for this is active recall. And yep. what Active Recall tells us is that if you push and, well, it's cut a couple of pieces. You give yourself variety. You personalize anything you do, even if you don't know that you're using mnemonics or whatnot, but you, you personalize it by thinking, what does this connect to? What does this remind me of, et cetera? And then the, the, the main part of it really is, are you willing to push yourself? Like, mm. I, I even just did it here. You know, I was just like... What was it? Oh, yeah, totality, right? <laughs> yeah. So uh, by not freaking out, not thinking, oh, I'm dumb or what have you, just allowing yourself to solve that, solve that puzzle. And you'll be in situations like myself often where you're interviewed or whatnot, and there'll be this little glitch because you're actually doing one thing. Then you're called upon to do a, a, a yeah. mnemonic task or what have you. I had this um, with Ron Johnson. Ronald Johnson, I think, is the... the yeah the proper thing. I never asked him if I can call him Ron, so I'll correct myself. Yeah, I don't there. know either. <laughs> but we were, we were talking and I was, I, I said Hugo of St. Victor or something. And then I was like something like that. And I was actually thinking of my image for Hugh of St. Victor, but I'd use this guy named Hugo. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes you like, make a little bit of a mess. And that I think is, is the other thing is that people should be willing to take risks because mm. we get, even, even just in our mother tongue, we walk over our own I'm doing it now. Like I'm, yeah. I'm speaking English and so forth. So the idea that you would ever avoid that with no matter how much memory training you ever get is just, it's just not practical. It's not possible. Interesting. Well, I'm Anthony, obviously you are very well educated, very well read, uh, very well spoken. Uh, when, when you meet up with people, cause let's say like I, I, connect with a lot of people who would not consider themselves as, you know, like, like the idea of doing memory palaces, it's almost like going and getting a PhD to them, you know, or mm -hmm. I, I don't want to make it sound that, that big of a deal, but, but still it's, it seems so much work and it seems so higher than, than, you know, Hey, I'm just, you know, it's easier for me to just do rote. I honestly, I don't even know like whether it's my role to try to convince people to use the memory palace for scripture memory, or if it's just like, listen, if you just don't want to do it, then don't do it. Like, how do you approach that kind of, uh, just the people that, that are interested in, let's say your magnetic memory method that, that does rely very heavily on, on that. There's no perfect answer for it. Yeah. I can tell you one thing that breaks my heart and it happens every time that I do it. And in mm. some way I was glad for all the crazy lockdowns that we went through because it prevented me from being able to do memory demonstrations in public. 
But every mm. time I've done a memory demonstration in public, 35 names, 45 names, whatever, the amount of people are there, people line up to tell me how they could never do that. And yeah. I just, what have I done to fail? You know? Um, and people are always like clamoring to explain why that their brain is different, why that they can't do it. And I yeah. just have to sort of default on the, you know, if you love them, let them go uh, or uh, <laughs> let them be free. But by that same token, I try as much as I possibly can to spend the time and to explain to them, look, it is maybe a challenge in the beginning. There might be some people who are a little bit ahead of you in terms of having had the good fortune to read more books when they were a kid or be attracted to reading in the first place, etc., which maybe gives you a bit of an edge. I don't know. Hmm. But I explained to them that I have seen so many people go from telling me I'm an just a horrible human being, you know, like by insisting that this is the way and yada, yada, yada. And then coming back to me a year later, two years later and saying, I'm so glad that I gave this a, diff a second chance. And I went yeah. to this book and suddenly it made sense to me or I took action, like you said, and you know, all this Zen stuff you're always saying about, you know, the, the, the way must be tried and blah, 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 do or do yeah. not, there is no try, like all this kind of stuff. And they're just like, yeah, that's true. Because what we're talking about is beyond name and form. The best memory scientists want to get rid of the word memory. It's not sufficient to the cause. It doesn't describe what we're talking about. Memory mm. techniques, the word mnemonics, that doesn't describe what we're talking about. Space being everywhere, you know, like we can do all these things. Words, 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 words. What we are really talking about has no explicit description. But we can make analogies and associations. You might be the kind of person who also doesn't learn a martial art for whatever reason, who knows? Yeah. You might also be the person who doesn't go and play chess, who knows? You might also be the person who never goes to debate club, who knows, but you know, and you can sit and reflect and say, am I gonna be the person who talks myself out of the thing? Mm -hmm. Or am I gonna be the person who explores and experiments? Because that's all I ever did is explore, experiment, and I'm just lucky that I had the predisposition for it. But I can tell you there's lots of things I never had a predisposition for and when I really wanted them, I made it happen. I'm not, I, was, I wasn't born with an understanding of the internet, but most of what I do on my site, I have very few people helping me. I figure it out, I get it done. Do I want to? Not necessarily. Do I like knowing what uh, SSL sockets are and like, or whatever they're called, like all these things? No, I, I, would, I would have rather been a better entrepreneur who actually could figure out, I mean, you said kind words about me being able to speak, but I can't figure out how to explain <laughs> what it is that I want to do. I have to edit my own videos because I'm thinking, okay, so we got Noah's Ark and then we're gonna have like a way to describe how that moving this way and then that way with numbers and all this. Like, I have to do it myself. So I had to learn how to edit videos and stuff like that. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I mean, there's no easy answer, but I think Yoda got it right. I mean, there is no try. There just isn't one. If you want this, you can do it. It's as simple as looking at the alphabet in a particular way. And when you sit down, spend the time consistently enough to rewire your brain, because it does require some uh, neuroplastic engineering and yeah. uh, maybe some neurogenesis, when you do that, you will then say, this is as easy as tying my shoes. That guy was right. What was I hesitating for? That's what I hear all the time. It's like a mantra. Why didn't I do this sooner? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Neither do you. It doesn't matter. Let's get, let's get together. Just get started. So I think all of us who, and people ask me all the time, I love this technique. It's touched me. It's transformed me so deeply. How come I can't convince other people to do it? And I just say, this is not a cult. You know, it, it just, just be a person who loves it mm. and share. And then when you make a mistake in public and you fall flat on your face, just say, look, I'm a person who, yeah. who loves memory. And uh, what, what was your name again? Sorry, I've got to correct my mnemonic here. <laughs> yeah. What a thought-provoking conversation with Anthony. If you want to learn more about him, you can go to magneticmemorymethod.com. Or he has, as he said, tons of free videos on his YouTube channel that I'll link to below, or you can just search for Magnetic Memory Method. If you want to improve your ability to memorize scripture, I hope that you'll take a moment to subscribe to this channel, but then also watch another one of these great interviews that I've done with other people who have memorized extended portions of scripture, who share their tips, their techniques, and their encouragements that will hopefully inspire you.